because what I'm going to get into is the topic of overcoming deception. I want to get into this. There's been so many things. And of course, even on this broadcast, we share tremendous information. Some of it's very conspiracy, wild. Some of it's just normal run of the mill stuff. But at the end of the day, we've got to also be honed in on how to deal with deception. And there's a symphony of deception out there today, and we've got to learn to overcome it. So we're going to talk about this. I'm going to really go into this. It's going to be revelatory for you. I encourage you to repost it. And just before I get into it, of course, I want to say a huge thank you because we do this every day and we're here all the time. We have new viewers and there's also a lot of scammers out there. I just simply want to invite you to only sow or give or partner at josephz.com. Now, you guys have been so good about this. You've avoided all the, the stuff that's out there. You've been very intelligent. And uh, we hear from so many of you saying, hey, somebody tried to pretend they're you again, Joseph. And so I purposefully say this every day that I can right from here, right from my mouth and then saying the website and all that. The reason is, is because it, it'll just give you clarity. You'll know what to do. When in doubt, go to josephz.com. There's only one. And of course, you can text the keyword give. Now, if you've been a partner here for a long time, thank you so much. I mean, really, thank you. If you become a partner recently, thank you also. We're taking ground together and it's important. But if you feel a sense that you want to join our partner family, would you comment in the feed today, partnering today? We want to welcome you. We want to celebrate you. And of course, you only do that by going to josephz.com or you text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. And uh, we just want to welcome you. So in addition to all this, We've got so many things happening and uh, we're just grateful to all of you who uh, participate in this regularly. If you do uh, team up with us, you'll hear from us every month. We'll call you and it's a, it's a growing thing. And we're just, we're believing God is speaking to people to have a, a God calling to do this. So praise God. Also the text to join list. This is important. You say, why is it important? Well, if all of a sudden these platforms get shaken and you can't find us for some reason or the powers that be say, we don't like this anymore you can still get us or we can reach out to you and tell us where we are. And that number is 719-719-3637. You text the keyword join and we're able to reach out to you right to your cell phone uh, through that sign up. And also, if you're outside the US, please download the Joseph Z app. It's very important that you do that because then you'll get notifications uh, for things that are happening as they're happening, even if you're outside the United States or in areas or maybe the text to join numbers not working. Okay, man, got a lot to get into here. We're talking about overcoming deception, overcoming deception. It's interesting how the word of God goes into this. It starts talking about that people can be deceived. And in the last days, it really begins to talk about if possible, if it were possible, even the elect would be deceived, even the elect would be deceived. And I find that very interesting that, uh, that that's what the Word of God teaches us. So um, I want to welcome to the broadcast this morning uh, my chief editor, my main uh, researcher, someone who really helps me quite a bit, helps this ministry quite a bit, and that's Mary. Mary, welcome. Good morning. Thanks we got Mary. Me. Mary's Again. in the house. <laughs> we, we got to talking and mm -hmm. we were talking about this because you helped me with the book Servants of Fire. Mm -hmm. And one of the big things we started discussing was the topic of angels of light. And of course, that led us to the topic of deception. Right. Deception. So kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. So I have Servants of Fire right here. If you go to chapter six, it talks about the messengers of deception. And in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, it says, And no wonder for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. So he presents himself to be wonderful. He does. Amazing. And that's why people, so many people are falling into deception these days. I really think that's true. I mean, the, the angel of light narrative is really um, serious. It does say that if possible, mm -hmm. the elect, even the, and this has always bothered me, you know, in the New Testament where it says, if possible, even 
the elect would be deceived. The elect. I mean, that's strong when you consider that because the elect should not be deceived. They shouldn't right. fall into this type of narrative and yet they do. And so what I want to do is I want to put that actually up on the board um, in Matthew, or excuse me, Mark chapter 13, verse 22. Let's put that up there. We'll get a running start with it. I'll show you a couple of them. But in Mark chapter 13, verse 22, right on the screen. I want you to take a look at this with me. It begins to talk about if it were possible. I'm going to show you this here. If you have your Bibles today, Mark chapter 13, that's what I'm quoting here <laughs> as we dive in, Mary. Mark chapter 13, verse 22. Let's go to the board if we could, and I want you to see this. It says, for false Christs and false prophets will rise, show signs. They'll show signs and wonders to do what? To deceive to deceive, if possible, even the elect. I find that fascinating uh, when you look at this. Um, but there's so much we can get into with this topic. Um, you recognize that it also goes on to say in verse, uh, let's, let's just go to another, another scripture back in Matthew. In Matthew, it begins to talk about Matthew 24, verse 24. Matthew 24, verse 24. I want to take a look at that because that's going to be important. Matthew 24, verse 24. I want you to see this because when we're looking at these things, it's important that you begin to be armed to know what we're dealing with in the body of Christ. So Matthew 24, verse 24, it says, For false Christ and false prophets will rise, show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So here you see this again. You see this again. To deceive, if possible, even if it were the elect. One more time. When I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing this narrative, I thought for years, I thought, my goodness, why would this be such an issue? But let's go to verse 23. It sheds a little light on it. Going back to verse 23, it says, then if anyone says to you, this is the predicated narrative leading up to that, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. And I have a lot of thoughts on this, because we're mm -hmm. talking about angels of light, we're talking about messengers of deception, and all this, but then with that predicated understanding, let's go to verse 24 again. And then it says, four false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive if possible, even the elect. Now, there's people that, that claim that, you know, they're doing fake miracles and meetings, those kind of things. And that is what the false uh, Christs and false prophets are. I don't think so. Yeah. I think this is going to be more widespread because let me, let me look right at you. What would it take for an elect person, somebody that as an elect, it's, it's a mature believer, somebody that knows the word of God. They've had encounters with the Lord. They've walked with God probably a long time. They're very seasoned in the things of the Lord. What would it take for a person that has discernment, is walking in an elect status to be deceived? Well, I can tell you it's not falsified miracles, you know, at a meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be those things. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something else. Mary? It's probably not being grounded in the word seeking yeah. they're they're constantly seeking for the next thing from somebody instead of going always going back to the word yeah and i know uh paul calls out the galatians he does uh, in galatians 1 6 through 8 i don't know if elijah wants to get that on on the board. galatians 1 6 through 8 are you reading it from the book um no well it is in the book it's oh, okay. on page 107 but going back to galatians 1 6 he says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Wow. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you, then what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Yeah. We could show it right on the board here too. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. I marvel, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different, a different gospel. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of thoughts about this, mm -hmm. a lot of thoughts. And sticking with Matthew 24, 24, talking about false Christ, false signs and wonders. I'm going to write something on the board. Okay. You guys roll with me for a second. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about this, I've thought about the elect, particularly the elect, how could they be deceived? Mm -hmm. What would cause that kind of deception? Well, I'm going to write a couple of thoughts here. Number one, I think weariness. Right. Weariness. So what do I mean by weariness? Well, more than just, boy, I'm tired doing my, my work for the Lord. I think it goes well beyond that. I think it gets into uh, the crisis fatigue. 
What does it say, Mary, maybe you can look this up real quick while we're doing this, but what does it say in the scripture when it says, because of lawlessness, the hearts of many will grow cold? Mm -hmm. Lawlessness will abound and the hearts of many grow cold. I'll look at uh, it. It's, it's important that we, we understand this stuff. It's probably in the Matthew 24 narrative as well. But lawlessness will abound, mm -hmm. and that's where you get crisis fatigue because you continue to see lawlessness, right? And you, it, it creates a fatigue, and then the hearts of even the elect or many grow cold. Now, this is why we practice the Word of God. This is why we stand firmly on the Word of God. But number one, I think deception would come to the elect. Yeah. Okay. And of course, we're talking out of Matthew. It's 24, 20, 12. 20, what was the one you said, Mary? Matthew 24, 12. Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we'll put verse uh, 12. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's where it's talking about uh, this, this lawlessness because lawlessness abounds, the love of many will grow cold. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at that and you start to understand what it's talking about, that's a crisis fatigue. In other words, um, I think it's Psalm 73, which begins to talk about, uh, I considered the way of the wicked. I considered that there's no pains in their death. They don't suffer like we do. They don't go through all the things we have to go through as believers until I considered their ways. Mm -hmm. The Lord had to really deal with it. But when you're looking at this, number one, I think it's crisis fatigue. Number two, I think it would be, this is something that's, that I sense powerfully with it. I think it would be, man, I'll draw it in. No, I'll just stick with it. Look at this. I think it would be dramatic signs in the heavens which you could, I could do a number three, uh, which we could get into angels of light. Now, to me, <clears throat> there's a lot of people that would get deceived. They would get deceived through the idea that um, if they're not rooted and grounded in the Word of God, but they could get deceived by simply having bad teaching hit them over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And then it's like bad company corrupts good morals, right? It mm -hmm. begins to break you down. But I think what's happening and where the elect would be concerned is that if they're not in the rooted, rooted and grounded status of the Word of God, they're not really in it. Um, and I always have the antidote here. And I'll just give the antidote right on the front side. I'll just say it. The antidote comes from Hebrews 5.14. Hebrews 5.14 is the antidote to all this. I'll just, I'll just draw it here for us. Hebrews. If you're with us a lot, you'll recognize, you'll probably start memorizing this scripture. This is talking about having your senses exercised. To do what? To discern good and evil okay that's what this is all about senses exercise to discern good from evil i hope you understand what i'm saying here but when you have your senses exercised it won't matter what any of this is because the word of god is so alive in you now if you have people that are passive with the word they're passive with these things they're not aggressive in their faith they're not doing what i call weaponizing your faith if your faith is not being weaponized, then what can begin to happen is, is these begin to flood your heart, they begin to take you over, and you begin to have a bad experience. Crisis fatigue, I think, is something that, that we fight against a lot on this broadcast by showing you what's going on and the lawlessness that's in the world. Now, a lot of people that, that preach, oh, it's going to get better and better and better, mm -hmm. and there are doctrines out there that say, no, I'm telling you, it's going to get better, and then Jesus will come and sort it all out. I don't see that in the Word of God. Now, maybe I'm missing it, but that's just how I read the Bible. I don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. But what we do see is all these things happening but the signs that'll come in the end you see this in luke like 21 for example in luke 21 you start to see them talking about in luke 21 things that will come upon earth now this is a wild scripture okay 
And the reason it's wild, can you find that, Mary? Uh, men's hearts will fail them for things that are coming upon mm -hmm. the earth. That's Luke chapter 21. And it gets into it. But when you start to look at the actual context of that scripture, it's, it's very literal. And that's the part that makes it fascinating to me. That means there's going to be a lot more happening that's probably very... Um, very demonstrative, very much signs and wonders in the heavens. Things will be coming down through the atmosphere, through the atmosphere. Luke chapter 21, it says men's hearts will fail them for things that they, they witness or they see coming upon the earth. And, and that's a strong thing. And I want to really land at this angels of light in a moment, but I want to comment on this. It's Luke 21, six, sorry, 21, 26. Luke men's 21, hearts verse... failing them. Luke 21, verse 26. Mm -hmm. It's saying, and can you read it, Mary? The yep. exact scripture? Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Oh, man. Think about that, mm -hmm. okay? Now, let me look right at you. This is talking about, man, the expectation mm -hmm. of things that are coming. And then it says the powers of the heavens being shaken. When you read this scripture, we don't know what it is. The Bible doesn't say, but it says what's happening. It's saying that something is coming, get this, mm -hmm. through the atmosphere, right? through the atmosphere, down onto the earth. That's what the scripture says. We don't know what it is. Could be a meteorite, could be some mm -hmm. sign in the heaven. It could be a falsified UFO invasion. Mm -hmm. And I personally mm -hmm. believe, I can't prove it, so don't hold me to it, but... I personally believe, looking at the culture, looking at the way they're gearing us up, you can see the trend and the pattern, mm -hmm. and they want to get us to eventually believe that that is what's coming, a right. falsified UFO narrative. Yeah. And I believe that's what this, this could be. So signs in the heavens, let's just call it uh, space invaders, okay? Let's just call it uh, aliens. It has to be something that is going to be seen either like way in advance or shortly in advance that's going to cause people's hearts to freak out. It will. It'll cause them to freak out to the point of heart attacks. Right. Now, what would it take for men to be able to measure something that's coming through the atmosphere and they see it coming and it causes their heart to fail? Mm -hmm. I mean, that'd be pretty demonstrative. Right. Now, could it be that they can measure, say, the asteroid wormwood coming? Mm -hmm. Could it be that they could measure uh, what's going to happen? Maybe they could measure a huge meteor or asteroid coming and they can see it coming and they know it's absolutely going to mm -hmm. hit Earth. And yeah. that could make people freak out. It'll be world news, not just local news. World news. Mm -hmm. It'll be world. They'll be able to measure this. It's coming. Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe that this kind of thing could actually shake people. So when I say and I compare this to what would cause deception or a deceiving of the elect, it could be that they say, my goodness, it's not an asteroid or a meteorite. What if it really is, you know, this UFO narrative where suddenly like the movie Independence Day, something's coming over a city and it's all fake. What if it's mm -hmm. all fake? Right. And they do this to marshal this in or an agenda. And when this happens, they could begin to say, oh, yep, this is aliens. They created you. Now, number one, people are seeing things in the heavens already. They're seeing UFOs. They're seeing this stuff. But let me just be clear. There's no such thing as aliens. Mm -hmm. Although people are seeing things, although they're seeing real entities up there. It's right. demonic. It's fallen angel tech. It's all that stuff mm -hmm. that we're seeing. I just want to be clear. But when we're looking at it all, <clears throat> the other thing that you would begin to see is angels of light. Angels of light. What in the world would an angel of light be? What would it be? Like you said, mm -hmm. cloak themselves in light, make themselves look appealing, beautiful, whatever, but it's interesting. And what does the verse say leading up to that, Mary? Do you have that? Or is that... Was that Matthew 24? The angels of light? Yeah. I think that's actually Corinthians. Sorry. Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 14 or 13. Yeah. 2 Corinthians... 2 Corinthians 11, 11 14. 11, 13. Sorry. <laughs> let's, put, let's put 2 Corinthians 11, 13 on the board mm -hmm. real quick here. I want you to see this. And I'm getting this right out of the book, actually. 2 Corinthians chapter 11... And uh, verse 13, 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 13. Now, this is really important stuff, you guys. You, you need to know this because if to be forewarned is to be forearmed. You're mm -hmm. able to really deal with things. But 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, you begin to understand what is being said here. And this is strong. Now, 
Now it goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Transforming themselves, metamorphosizing, uh, faking this scenario, transforming themselves into workers of God, workers of light. Now, I, I'm dealing with this straight out of the book here, and it's, it's vital that you understand it, but it says, and this is Servants of Fire, you get this at josephz.com, but it says, such are apostles, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Now, before we jump to the next verse, why would someone transform themselves into an apostle or a worker of Christ? Well, for deceitful gain. Mm -hmm. People do things for gain, whether it's monetary or power or influence, mm -hmm. they do these things. Yeah. I like no, what you, sorry. No, you go ahead. I like what you say at the bottom of page 105. You say, what is of great concern is the way many people place experiences or the deep desire for them in such a high regard that it leads to irresponsibility. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Irresponsibility is mm -hmm. throwing off, it's throwing off the fundamentals of the word. Uh, I like this quote, you know, they're having out of Bible experiences, mm -hmm. you know, it's but you true. begin, yeah. And you begin to do this and it's a, it's a serious matter when you get into it. Um, and this of course applies to angelic visitations, all of it, but apostles, false apostles that would transform themselves. In other words, they put on the guise or the cloak that they were real apostles they're transforming themselves into apostles of christ they're pretending mm -hmm. that they're that that means they're doing it to gain something from people from an individual from the body of christ mm -hmm. to deceive for for whatever gain right the same is true for an angel of light why mm -hmm. would it do this now let's go to the next verse verse 14 it says and no wonder for satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light into an angel of light now that's kind of strong mm -hmm. it's really strong an angel of light and verse 15 kind of brings more clarification it goes on to say therefore it is no great thing if his ministers so that's interesting comparing the false apostles mm -hmm. and angels of light tying them together, saying, ah, oh, it's no big deal. They're, they're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. And it begins to say, also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness whose end will be according to their works. And that is very strong, very strong. Now, the reason I bring this out is because I want to go back to the board and I want to talk about this just a little bit further. Angels of light. Okay, here we go. So first of all, we've seen crisis fatigue, lawlessness is what I believe will cause that, signs in the heavens. These are things that I believe could deceive, if possible, even the elect. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13, 14, 15, you're seeing all this. 2 Corinthians 11 begins to deal with this. I'll just write it on the board. Kind of gives this whole narrative where it's talking about Satan himself cloaks himself as an angel of light. Now, just to kind of say this, you know what? There's a verse, and you were, you were saying this to me earlier too, Mary. What is it? Is that in Galatians where it says, if either we or... An angel from heaven. That's Galatians 1.8. And what is it going to? If, but if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Man, that, that Greek word there is anathema. Hmm. Meaning, it, and I think it goes on to double down on that later in that same passage. But when it's talking about anathema, it's saying, let them be eternally removed from God. Wow. That means eternally condemned. That's One translation scary. says, let them be eternally condemned. You know, for people that say hell's not going to last forever or outer darkness, whatever mm -hmm. you want to get into. But the bottom line is that's pretty strong language. Yeah. If we or an angel mm -hmm. from heaven, angel from God. But I believe that is where you can begin to see that it says angels of light. They pretend to be angels of God. Mm -hmm. Now, to be on point here, we're talking about how do the elect get deceived? It bothers me. Mm -hmm. And if we can kind of solve this, then we can also talk about how anyone can avoid being deceived. Right. How can the elect be deceived? First of all, let me identify one more time what it is that could deceive the elect in my mind. And maybe mm -hmm. I'm missing a piece. Uh, you're watching right now. Maybe you could go ahead and comment what you think would be a deception for the elect. 
Number one, crisis fatigue. Lawlessness. Because of lawlessness, Matthew 24, verse 12, uh, because of lawlessness abounding, the love of many will grow cold. I don't know if that's necessarily the elect is kind of talking about believers that sort of give up the fight. Mm -hmm. They just go, mm, I, you know, I'm going to go act like the world. It seems like they benefit more anyway. Right. Then you go into signs in the heavens, and we talked about that, that it could be Matthew, or excuse me, Luke 21, 26, that things would come down upon the earth. They would see something in the heavens, whether it's signs, wonders, or literal visitation of something coming through our atmosphere. What would that be? The Bible doesn't say, mm -hmm. but it could be that the elect look at that and say, I thought one thing, and here I'm looking at this, and they're saying this, these entities that are coming through the atmosphere, this is me adding my thoughts to it, mm -hmm. coming through the atmosphere saying they're our God, they seated us here, and, and they're back to say they're here to basically right-size the world. I believe in that. Mm -hmm. And you can see how people through empirical observation could fall for that. They could fall for that type of narrative. Now, finally, you get into number three, angels of light. To me, this means supernatural encounters mm -hmm. where angels or angelic uh, beings or angels of deception would appear to make you cooperate with them because when you cooperate with any entity or spirit, that's the only way they have authority for a saved person or unsaved person. They need you to cooperate. So why would they deceive? Here's the word to gain access. Mm -hmm. They want access to your life, your family, so they can act out their nefarious plans through your life. Right. And that's what it's about. But I see that being three ways the elect could be deceived. Mm -hmm. Now that's important. What do you think, Mary? I mean, they should present, I mean, they obviously have to present themselves as angel of light because if they came as this ugly, scary looking demon, I'm sure they wouldn't get access to a lot of people. Maybe. <laughs> Just maybe Just they come in. And they, yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't show up like with pitchfork and horns like, yeah, I'm the goat man. You know, they don't do that. They show up and they, they look appealing. Right. You know, hi, I'm grandma. I'm here. I come from the planet, whatever. You know, and they come floating in the room. Oh, mm -hmm. I, I think that would be one way people could be deceived. And mm -hmm. you say, well, the elect would never fall for that. Well, they would. Mm -hmm. They would if they're tired. They're not staying on point in the word of God. They're not right. exercising their senses. So the antidote to all of this is Hebrews 5.14. Mm -hmm. We three, let's put it on the board. This is important. Mm -hmm. you know, cause, and I think we have a fiduciary responsibility to talk about these things. I, I do too. Hebrews 5.14. It says, but solid food belongs to those who are of, Full age. Now, when it says full age, it's not talking about uh, chronological age. Mm -hmm. It's talking about maturity. And it goes on to say that is those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Good and and evil. So if we, we don't have our senses exercised, we can't discern. That's what I'm getting at. Yep. yep. That's right. Because mm -hmm. if, if we don't have, if we don't have the word of God, and so then you ask the question, well, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. How do you exercise your senses? You don't let your emotions run away with you. Mm -hmm. You don't, let me look right at you. You don't let your emotions run away with you. When things get difficult, you don't freak out, you don't fall apart, you don't flip out. Instead, you continue to say no, the word says. As a matter of fact, that's what Hebrews chapter 6 gets into. It starts talking about you obtain the promises by faith and patience. Mm -hmm. And then you can add a third one, endurance. Mm -hmm. Faith, patience, endurance. So once you decide, I'm going to stand in the Lord, I'm going to do what God called me to do. I know what the Bible says, and you stand on that no matter what, no matter what you see with your five senses, mm -hmm. no matter what you hear, no matter what it looks like in the natural, you stay on that word. And there's something about this mm -hmm. where Jesus said, blessed are they who believe without seeing. Without seeing. That's hot sauce. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. Blessed are they who believe without seeing. It's believing, period. With, yeah. That's it. Yeah, uh, that's it. Um, it. It's so strong. Um, blessed are they who believe without seeing. I, I think about that very much because most people, they need the proof. We need the proof. People say, no, I, I need to really see this. I need to, I need to really, you know, get a hold of what God's saying to me. And I, I, I just need to really know what the Lord's saying. And I can't just act without it. But Jesus said, blessed are you 
when you don't see what you believe. Mm -hmm. That's strong. Right. Yeah. I think Jesus is so amazing that when he wants to reach, uh, he always wants to reach his people, but he always does it exactly how that person needs it. I know for me, it was an encounter I had, um, first encounter I had with Jesus that was so real. We were messing around on the piano, me and my husband and some <laughs> friends. And the, Your husband's Holy, awesome. the Holy Spirit just started speaking to me and started showing me little glimpses in my whole life of where he was in different scenarios. And it was all pictures. It was all in my, you know, for two hours, Josh, it, the atmosphere changed in the room <laughs> and he played the piano for two hours while I was on the floor, just receiving from God. Actually, this was before we were even married and wow. I was new baby Christian. So Jesus is so merciful that he always ministers to people exactly the way they need it when, when they need it. That is so strong. I, I think about that because, you know, I know Josh too, you mm -hmm. know, Josh and I've been in ministry together like 33 years at mm -hmm. this point. And so I just, I adore that man of God and uh, you two together are a power team, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm so glad you guys are a part of the ministry and you're mm -hmm. here, but, um, yeah, no, that's, that's powerful. The Lord began to show you those things. Yeah. Um, I believe there's a discipline in that too, Mary, that when the Lord begins to reveal things to you, but you can walk by faith, not mm -hmm. by sight, right? right? Yeah. We walk by faith, not by sight. Right. When you walk in how can I, this is really, this is where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul said, I am fully persuaded, mm -hmm. fully persuaded, uh, that, that neither height nor depth nor angels nor demons nor principalities, powers or things to come past, present, whatever is able to separate me from the love of God. There's mm -hmm. something about that. Not just something. It is everything. When you take on the word of God and then you become fully persuaded in your heart over over what's going on in the natural, over what you can see, over what you can observe, over mm -hmm. what you can measure. Right. <clears throat> I think there's a secret place of victory for those that say, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. What did Jesus say to Jairus? He said, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Only believe. Mm -hmm. What a story that was. Yeah. Because Jairus, everything in the natural, he's looking at it and the child was gone. He mm -hmm. got news even. And Jesus said to him, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Only believe. After yeah. he got bad news, like it's too late, master. She's gone. It's yeah. over with. And Jesus said, hold up. Don't look at that. I know that's the news. I know that's the report. I know it's finalized. But don't be afraid. Only believe. Right. If we can discipline ourselves now, there's a naivety that goes with that where people get naive and they get uh, into stupid stuff. If you just only believe, but you haven't put the word in, mm -hmm. this is where people get into goofy things. Right. Like, you know, cult behavior, stupid stuff. People get, uh, they, they get, I don't know, they get rolled away by mm -hmm. the storms of life or a really bad ideology. But if you'll read this book for you, mm -hmm. and I, let me look right at you. If you will read the Bible, until it starts talking back to you. You read the word of God until it starts talking back to you, until the word of God becomes your reality. You say, wow, that's, that's intense, Joseph. Well, yeah, but we're in an intense world. And the only way you don't get deceived is by hiding the word of God in your heart. If you abide in him and his words abide in you, you will overcome deception. It's just the way it is. You will overcome it, you will rise above it, and you will see victory in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. I think that's how the elect could do it because yeah. the elect really aren't special. It's just, they're more developed. Yeah. They're called of God and they're highly developed believers. Yeah. And they need to go to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's key to stay on point. Just stay on point. Mm -hmm. But believing without seeing, believing is yeah. blessed are those who believe without seeing. So that's kind of a vital, a vital part of it. Yeah. Jesus is Lord. And that's why I think even with what I was sharing of Jesus ministered specifically to me, it wasn't a, you know, seeing some, something happen out there, it was that moment with myself. And so that in that moment, I remember finding Jesus. There is a scripture. He says, if you seek after the Lord with your whole heart, you will find him. And he will, it says he will be found by you. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. It's man, this really stirs me up. I get really stirred over this because I recognize, um, I recognize the strength of God in this. Let, you know, I'm not even getting here, but let's go to John chapter 20, verse 29 real quick. John chapter 20, verse 29. I want you to see this so we don't just say it a bunch of times, but John chapter 20, 
verse 29. And this is, of course, there's so many things we could get into with this, but Jesus was talking to Thomas mm -hmm. of all people. That's mm -hmm. where it comes from, Thomas. Right. Right. And it's because Thomas said, I won't, unless I can see the nail marks in his hands, mm -hmm. unless I can see the spear in his side, unless I can see these things, I put my hand there, unless I can see these things, I won't believe. Mm -hmm. I won't believe, he said. But I find it interesting, and Jesus, this is where the saying really comes from. Uh, let's look on the board here, John 20, verse 29. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Now you've believed. Because this is after Jesus said, come here, Thomas. Give me your hands. Let's do it. Go ahead. Feel the holes. Feel this. It's me, right? He went down that road. But he then said this, and this is what we've been talking about pretty much the entire broadcast. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Mm -hmm. Yet have believed. In other words, despite all odds, despite all empirical observation, God's just got this thing about being believed. Mm -hmm. He does. God's got a thing <laughs> about being believed. Let me look right at you. I felt it was very important that we just talked about how to avoid deception. So how do you avoid deception? Believe without seeing. Start practicing that. That's where faith comes in too. That's, mm -hmm. that's where you say, I believe the word says I'm healed, for example, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen it in the natural. Right. But the word says it. So what do I do? I believe it. I believe the word of God regardless of what's going on. I believe without mm -hmm. seeing. That is where faith is concerned. That's where you start to break through. You don't see it, but you believe it. And that is like the highest of currencies mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what you're going through, and I, I bring this up because of the crisis fatigue, the elect being deceived, people getting pulled away by all that life is, is throwing at them. You need to hear this today. Jesus loves you. He loves you. There's nothing you can do about that. And every now and then we do these broadcasts and we just go on about some of the wildest stuff. And I will continue to do that every single weekday. But the point I do this is, is every now and then I want to bring something to you that's going to help you really, really outgrow the yoke, really not get taken by the culture. And it's just simply this. Believe without seeing. And how do you do that? Again, the simple answer, exercise your senses by reading the Word of God, making your emotions what you don't sense that's going right. You put that under the Word of God and you just keep pounding. Then you add your faith to it. You spend time in prayer. You know, some mornings I get up, and I'm not exaggerating, some mornings I get up at 2 and 2.30 in the morning and I'll pray all the way into the workday. I'll pray all the way into uh, going live with you in the morning and then afterwards and then I have interviews and things we do. We do a lot of written work. I write throughout the day. But you know what I do is I just begin to make sure I spend that time. I spend that time with the Word of God. And for me, I have to go every day where I've read the Bible. I got to read the Bible every day. And I encourage you to do the same. Read the Bible every day. Every day. Get it in your heart. You might think, oh, it's not working. It's doing something. You better get it in your heart. Because the days we're going into, if you will do this, I believe God will just continue to advance you. I hope this is helping you because I feel it's important that you begin to break out. So here's what I want to do. I want to pray for you. Maybe Mary will pray for you too. And we just begin to speak life over you. But just before we get into that, I, I really want to also say a very big thank you to our partners. Oh, and also we were reading out of this book today. You could get this at josephz.com. Um, we, we just barely even got into it today about what you can learn through this. And I encourage you to get Servants of Fire at josephz.com. It's a number one. Uh, on Amazon, it's number one right now. It, it's just stayed at number one for the longest time. And uh, for whatever reason, the Lord's put favor on it. He's put his breath on this book. I'm so grateful. You know, I don't do ghost writers. I write my own books. I really write these. Mary helps me edit them. Mm -hmm. She puts them together. Sometimes other people have a little bit of input, but Mary really is my senior editor. That's why I have her on specifically on this topic today. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, I, I believe that it's going to help you. It's going to help you authorize angels. It's going to help you break through. It's going to help you pray prayers. The whole back chapter is dedicated to prayers that authorize angels according to the Bible. And I think that'll be important for you. So I also want to say to every partner that's here, 
Some of you have been with us a long time. Some of you are recent and you're brand new partners. Some of you are going to comment, I'm partnering today. And we want to welcome you if you do that. We want to celebrate you. So thank you, those of you that are partnering today. But what I really want to say to you is if you can't do it, if you're unable to, we understand some people are just in a scenario right now that doesn't allow that. We pray for you. We stand with you. We're here for you. We care about you, no matter what station you're in. But if you are able to, if you're able to, I'm going to pray for you. If you're able to, I would encourage you to partner today. Would you consider doing that? If you partner, you're going to hear from us every month. We're going to call you. Our team, our team that we know will be calling you, praying with you, loving on you. Uh, we have a lot of things we're going to do for partners. This is just the beginning. And I simply want to say to you, if you partner today, we want to welcome you to the family. And you do that only, and I bring it up every time to avoid the scams. You go to josephz.com. That's how you do it. josephz.com, or you text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. And uh, we just want to welcome you to the family. Father, I bless every person who sows today. I bless every person that's hearing these words and life is coming into your heart. I begin to release the word of life to you, the word of faith, the word of increase, the ability to hear what the Spirit is saying and outlast the enemy, to outgrow the yoke, to step to the other side. I speak peace over you and I speak clarity that will cut deception off your life. No symphony of deception in your life. Victory is in your life, in Jesus' name. That life will shine in darkness. I see somebody right now, and your children have been under deception. You've been struggling as your children have been under deception. And the Lord is saying, I will remove the heavy yoke. I will take away the burden. I will open the double doors. And I am your deliverer, and I'm delivering you even now. Even now. Right now, in Jesus' name, right now, the Lord God is your sun and your shield, and the Lord is the one who bestows favor and honor, and no good thing is he going to withhold from you who walk uprightly before him. Man, I just bless you today. I speak the peace that passes all understanding, that it would guard your heart, guard your mind, and victories around the corner. Remember, on a bad day, you're anointed to be the very best there is. I got so much to get into in the coming days. I, there's, I just keep looking at this, and I have several things we want to bring to you, and we take it one day at a time, because there's a lot I know God wants to give you, unpack for you, and I promise you this. I'm going to be here for you through it all. Every single day, I can humanly be present. We're going to be right here. I bless you. Jesus is Lord. And if you would do this one thing, please, if you would, watch this. I want to thank our partners and those of you who are watching right now who have been joining us. And maybe there are some of you who might even have been on the fence about becoming a partner. I just want to encourage you, if that's something that you might be praying about or inquiring the Lord about, to maybe just go ahead and take a step. And uh, we would love to invite you as one of the, our partners and as a partner family. You'll get a call every month from us. You'll receive a phone call. We pray for you. And uh, there's, we have many other resources that we have where you can come together and receive prayer as well. And so if you're looking to potentially partner somewhere, please send us. We're looking to go everywhere we can reach all around the world to get the gospel of Jesus, the good news to any and all who will hear and see and trust and know that he is Lord. So if you're looking to partner, you can go ahead and go to josephz.com. All the information is there for you to join and to sign up with us and partner up really coming together as a joint partnership to really getting the gospel around the world. Visit us at josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. We sure do love you all so much and we are so grateful for your support and your help so we can see this world one for Jesus. 
Are you prepared for 2024? Well, we want to do our part to ignite the roar in 2024. That's why we're hosting the Power to Stand Conference in Mesa, Arizona, February 9th and the 10th. My dear friend Rick Renner will be joining me along with Pastor Jason Anderson for two powerful days that are saturated in the presence of God. I'm telling you, this world is getting wild. This year is going to be filled with unparalleled challenges, but you're going to be filled with the faith of God to stand against what comes next. I encourage you, join us for this conference February the 9th and 10th at The Power to Stand. I promise you, your life is going to be impacted. I hope to see you there.